Hey guys, welcome to my Cubase 5 tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you some basic things um, to get you started. So let's get into that. First of all, you need to make yourself a folder on the desktop. So if you just right click and click new, make yourself a folder and then name that something that you can remember. Then you're going to locate your Cubase desktop icon, double click it and start Cubase up. Once Cubase is loaded you'll be presented with this screen. Once you've done a few uh, projects in Cubase, in this window they will be there so then you have an easy access to them. Um, right now yours should be blank and what you're going to do is click new project. Once you've clicked that button you'll get a series of options but don't worry about what these are at the moment. What you want to do is just keep it nice and simple and open an empty project. It will then ask you where you want to store your project so you're clicking on the file you made and then you want to be pressing OK. Once you've done that, you will be presented with an, a new project. So first of all, what you need to do is locate the volume and just make sure that's at a healthy level. So you don't want it to be too loud so it's clipping and you don't want it to be too low so you can hear everything appropriately. Um, Okay, so the most important thing that I believe that you should do when you first start a Cubase project, and it's the first thing that I do, is to set the tempo. You may not be sure at what tempo you want your track running, but you should have an idea. If you've written a guitar part or you've written a lyric, you should have a tempo in your head. So... What you need to do is just run a little experiment to get it right first of all. So you need to go to tempo here and click it and then you'll see that that now turns to fixed. I'm going to fix my tempo so if you just go to here and double click it will highlight up in blue which means that you can then input your own digits and I'm going to set that to 90. If you click on the, the white background it will then set it for you. Okay. Now to hear the click, you need to make sure it's turned on by this button. Just go to the beginning of your project, just in case your um, cursor is not there. Um, although it doesn't matter, you can just press play at the moment and you'll be able to hear the click. So just go ahead and press play. So as you can hear, that's my click running at 90 BPM. Now what I would do is sing along to this now, or I would play my um, musical instrument along to this click to see if it's at the right tempo of my song idea. If it wasn't right, then I would up the tempo or lower it depending on you know whether it's too slow or too fast. So let's just go back and double click again. And let's just say I want to now set it to 100 because it was a little slow. Again, click on the white background. As you can see, that just set itself and press play. Now you can hear it running a little faster. If that's fine with you, then you're ready to set your project. The reason why you do that is so everything is in time. You don't want to be trying to get everything in time at a later date. You want to make sure that your, your MIDI is in time and that your MIDI is in time with your audio that you will input. Say if you've recorded a guitar part and you don't record, I don't actually record in Cubase. So I'm inputting a lot of my audio. So you need to make sure that the audio and the MIDI and everything is running together because you know the tempo of your track you know what it is, you've set it just right there and then if you go to work at somebody else's place you know that the track is running at 100 so you can set a click 
machine wherever you are to 100 and everything's going to be in sync. Um, if you try to set the tempo at a later date in Cubase it's going to stretch your audio which is not going to sound good and also it's going to knock all your MIDI um, off as well so I just I just make sure I get that done before I start a serious project. Now we're going to talk about the transport bar which is this bar here. You don't need to know what all the functions are right now you just need to know the basic ones to use. So here the first one is record, play, stop, cycle which I call loop. Um, this one is going to take you to the very end of the project as you can see as well if you hover over something it will tell you what it is. So if you just want to sit and have a tour through Cubase by doing that, hovering over things, um, you're going to learn a lot quicker and as well it's going to, you're going to Google a lot less if you do that because um, the tools are there to help you understand. So again let's just hover over this and it's fast forward and rewind so there you go fast forward and rewind and this one I use a lot it's going to take you right to the beginning of your project if you're going to be using cycle and of course when you're exporting a track as well you need to make sure that your locators which are here are at the either side of your project at the either side of your, your audio um, you need to make sure that this is at the beginning and this side is at the end and you're always going to leave a little bit of room as well because a track doesn't play straight off it has a few moments and then it will play and then same with the end when a track ends it then has a few more moments before it will go into the next track so leave yourself some space um, so when you cycle Cubase is going to play you what is between those locators and only what is between those locators so let's just uh, see that in action. Okay, so as you can see, it's just running in between the locators. When you export your finished track, um, or anything for that matter, it's only going to export between those locators. I'm not sure if you can change that from happening because in Cubasis, you can change that from happening. So. Um, just for now make sure that your locators are you know covering everything that you want to export or loop okay so the next thing we need to talk about before we input some audio is the snap button which is up here okay the snap button lights up blue when it's on and as you can see it's white now that it's off what the snap actually does is snaps all your audio into place. It's going to snap it all to the bar for you. It's going to help you keep everything in time. If you have it off, then you get free movement, as you can see, around your project. If you have the snap on, so it's lit up in blue, the cursor uh, it's going to move to, it's going to snap to uh, the bars. Now you can change where it actually snaps to here, but we're not going to go into that right now because it's snapping to the bar is fine. Okay, so now we're going to input our audio and I usually have snap on to uh, input the audio because if, if you end up bringing it and dropping it into the middle you're gonna to have to scooch it all the way up to the to the front which gets annoying so put your snap on and then once you drop your audio into uh, the project it's going to be easier to get to the beginning okay so you need to locate you need to know in your head where your audio is first of all and there's a few different ways that you can input audio into Cubase one of them is uh, down here is where all your tracks will be. If you right click on this area, some options will come up. And all you need to know for now 
is add audio track or add MIDI track. Them are the only ones that you're going to be using when you first start using Cubase. Um, so I would put add audio track because I'm going to input some audio. You can also go up to project and you can add track. Again, don't worry about what everything else is. We're not really going to be using them things. And you would just go across and click audio or midi. There's a few ways that you can do any one thing in Cubase. There's a few ways to add an audio or midi track. Um, I've just showed you two that I can remember at the moment. Um, there's another one, but I can't remember. Okay, so the way I normally do it is the lazy way. <laughs> and I'll show you what what that is why and why I think it's lazy. I usually um, find my audio and then what I do is I scooch it over and if snaps on it's going to snap it right where I want it so I can get going. So this is the lazy way I just drag and drop. My preferred method <laughs> to do anything is to drag and drop. So that's the way I add a uh, audio track to Cubase. Okay, so over here down the side is the volume slider for this particular track. I tend to use this area a lot. There's a different way to access uh, the volumes of the particular tracks and I'll show you that in a second. First of all, we're going to do some cutting and some pasting. I'm just going to show you up here what these icons do. You're not going to use all of them, you're just going to use a few to start you off. And here are the main ones. So I'm going to turn snap off now. By the way, if you want to zoom in on your pro project, down here is where you can zoom in and out. And again, there's a couple of different ways you can do any one thing. And if you know the shortcut keys of Cubase, then that's even better. I haven't learned any, um, but my preferred method of zooming in and out is this. You can click an area up here and if you just drag down your cursor you'll zoom in and out and I find that this is the quickest way to do it for me. Okay, so say I don't want this bit here. What I'm going to do is select the scissors and I'm going to take them to where I want to chop it and just click it and it's going to chop it for me. Now I want to get rid of this area, this bit here. So you need to go back to your arrow. Your arrow is your object selection as you can see if you hover over it and you really need to be on this to do most things in Cubase. Um, to press play, to press stop, to add your effects, to do your volume, anything like that to set your tempo, you always need to be on your object selection. So you have to go back to that to delete this part. Now what you can do is you can right click which is going to bring up some options. I don't tend to do that. Um, you can add, you, What you can do is you can the simplest way is to hit delete on your keyboard now that it's highlighted like this and it will just disappear. That's what I tend to do. Um, Undo and redo, I've just used that, but I will go into it in a little minute and, and explain that to you. But it's 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 simple, you just undo in, you move that you made, or you re 